Hey, you guys, welcome back. So before we begin, somebody had asked for more Sven footage. So here we are. There he, oh, he looks so happy to be here. What a good boy. Are you a good boy? So to all the new plant parents out there, I wanna start this off by saying, you can handle the pests, I promise you. Pests are only a problem if you're not a vigilant plant parent. And the fact that you're here watching plant videos tells me that you are a vigilant plant parent. So if you're going around watering, just keep an eye, flip the leaves, just take a look. You're only going to run into a big concern on a plant that you haven't looked at recently. So today's controversial video is about adding more bugs to your plant ecosystem in your home. This topic is a little near and dear to my heart because I have a ton of house plants and I have a ton of allergies and I have a fluffy dog. <laughs> so for reasons like this, I don't like to be spraying my plants all the time with insecticides. So I have found a new love as of this year for beneficial bugs. And I wanted to share my experience. It's a bit of a controversial topic because you are adding thousands of more bugs <laughs> at times into your home. And I know that that can freak some people out, uh, which is why I want to calm some of those fears and tell you about my experience, show you some clips of what my little bugs do and just talk about it. So I'm gonna go over some of the more common beneficial bugs and also tell you my personal favorites. So number one that you see all the time people using in the summers are ladybugs. You can buy these at greenhouses, plant stores. Uh, you can go steal some from outside and bring them inside. I know I've definitely rehomed a few and then immediately lost them. But ladybugs are good because they eat really anything soft bodied. They aren't super particular. While they're known for loving aphids, they'll also eat your mealybugs, your thrips, all that jazz. So ladybugs are good, but they're distracted a little bit easily. So you'll notice when you bring ladybugs into your home that they just go to your windows or they go, like they seem to be everywhere that you don't want them to be. And you can like put them next to the bugs they're supposed to be eating and they're still like, I'll fly to the window instead. Like they seem to just kind of be a little harebrained and they're large. So I don't love having them in my home. They are not my favorite. Next is lace wings. Lace wings are also generalists, meaning that they eat really all your soft bodied, your aphids, your spider mites, thrips, all that. And lace wings can also freak people out because when you bring them in, typically you're bringing in the larval form and they grow up and they're not tiny. So once they're adults in a few weeks, you can see them around your home. For that reason, I don't like to use lace wings. I've heard great things about them, but I don't know if in my little apartment I could handle having a bunch of adult bugs. Now onto my personal favorite are pirate beetles. I get these from Grow Live here in Canada. They are fantastic. They are about the size of like a fruit fly, but they're clearly identifiably different. And I'll definitely, I'll insert some clips up here for you but they're easy to identify. They aren't great flyers, but they manage to go to the food source. So if you have thrips on one plant and spider mites on another, you will find that they are managing to get around your home without you noticing them too much to get to the food source. Now I like them because I can see them. So I find that some of the next insects that we're gonna be talking about, the very, very small, invisible to the human eye insects aren't as satisfying because I put them on and then I'm like, are they eating my pests? I don't know, I can't see. These I can see eating my pests. So I know when they're on my palm and they're going to town on a bunch of spider mites, I'm like, bug high five. Cause now I don't have to try and spray that down in the bathtub. And I would love to never have to wipe spider mites off of a palm frond ever again. I'm, I'm sick of it. <laughs> Pirate beetles are also very, very effective for thrips, which are like the bane of people's existence. Some people hate spider mites. I don't even care. If I see spider mites, I know I can deal with them and they're slow. Thrips are fast, so I don't wanna deal with thrips. When you have the pirate beetles, they go around, they eat them all, and they're very, very effective. You're not gonna miss something, they will eat it up. 
Now onto my second favorite, and usually ones that I pair with pirate beetles when I do a release, are predatory mites. So the two that I am familiar with are the Swirskii and the Cucumeris. And you can't really see these while they're working. They're fairly significantly cheaper in price than using some of the pirate beetles. Like pirate beetles are not cheap. For this bottle of 500 of them, which I had to buy twice this summer to do different releases, was somewhere around $70 Canadian, I wanna say. So I wouldn't call it a cheap way, but it is an effective way. Now those predatory mites are a lot cheaper, um, but again, they're a little less satisfying because you can't really see them doing their job, but they're just as effective. So they eat the eggs, they eat the larva, they eat everything. So they're also highly effective. So my personal favorite combination of beneficial bugs are the pirate beetles mixed with the cucumeris. So the cucumeris are quite cheap. You can buy little sachets of them, you sprinkle them on, or can even just, some of them are meant to just be like hooked on to plants. Again, they're not as mobile. So if I'm treating the palm with cucumeris, I'm hooking a couple sachets to the palm. They're not going to make it all the way across the apartment to the bird of paradise on their own. The pirate beetles won't need any of your help. They're just gonna be super cute wandering around eating stuff. <laughs> And with those pirate beetles, I just sprinkle them around the soil. I use them in the greenhouses. I use them on the plants throughout my apartment. I use them everywhere. I kind of just spread them equally. And I will usually notice them for a few weeks before they start to slowly die off. Again, these bugs don't survive forever. So if you're introducing 500 or 1,000 of them to your home, they'll die once the food source is gone. So once they've eaten all your thrips, they just die. I've tried to keep them alive by like leaving out little trays of water with raisins and stuff. <laughs> I truthfully can't say that I noticed them around longer after trying that, but it was worth a shot. I really like, I love them so much. I just wanted to keep them alive as long as possible. So to wrap this video up before I lose the sunlight, thanks a lot, Canada. I wholeheartedly recommend beneficial bugs, more bugs, more bugs, <laughs> if they're in your budget. I will say these are highly effective, but costly. This is also very effective. If you're persistent and far less costly, I think this thing is like $20 Canadian. Yeah, there we go. So also highly effective, much cheaper, but a little more effort. I think this would be considered more of like an organic way to control your pests. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Definitely leave any questions, comments down below. Have you used any beneficial bugs? What's your go-to pest remedy? Anything, leave it down below. I'd love to hear about it. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye you guys.